Hello and welcome to the My Wool Mitten podcast. My name is Carrie and I'm coming to you from the middle of the mitten, Michigan's Lower Peninsula, where I live on a small sheep farm. And you can see outside my window and the sun is coming and going, so we'll see. But uh, we're having a very blustery day here today and very spring-like temperatures and very windy and very rainy. And so I can't work outside. And I thought, well, maybe I'll sit down and get a little bit of recording done. So I'm going to record a little bit and then we'll watch it back and see how the color looks. Today I thought I'd uh, bring you an update about my Sox Spin Along 23 and show you where I'm at in my project and uh, a little bit of knitting and maybe a little bit of sheep talk uh, if I have time. So how are you all doing? I hope everyone's well and that you have a project and a beverage and um, that you can enjoy a few minutes here with me. So before I start talking about the sock spin along and show you what I've been working on, I want to show you, and you might chuckle about this little collar that I have on here. And boy, the light is very funny. I hope that it shows, but that doesn't really matter. It's black, so it's not going to probably show real true. But you can see how close it is around my neck. And you might see that there are loose stitches on the bottom and um, even some threads coming out the back. <clears throat> but this is the start of a sweater for me and I started out with I cast on with one sweater pattern in mind and then changed my mind part way through and they have a slightly different neckline and so I think I, I ripped back at least to the bottom of this turtleneck and thought I could pick the stitches back up <laughs> but I can't see them very well with the black. I think I'll maybe I'll put like a white cloth down and sit at the table and try to pick the stitches back up so I don't have to do this neck ribbing all over again. But the the sweater that I cast on that I cast this on for was the Weod sweater by Marina Skewa and I'm a huge fan of Marina. You know that if you've watched this podcast for very long. And um, I was participating in her out of the dark make along. I did a Guderian cowl and I had intended to cast on for a second one using this black yarn. But then I thought, you know, I think I'm actually going to start the wheeled sweater. I bought the pattern when she first came out with it. It's been in my queue for a long time or since it came out. So I think maybe a couple of years and I've done the hat and really liked the pattern. And this very special yarn is the first yarn the first product from my Shetland sheep, from my flock. So this is from my U style. I'm getting off on a little bit of a yarn tangent here for a minute. It's from my U style, who's registered as Black Gullmugget, is that's how you say it. Anyway, her, her body fleece is jet, jet black, just as black as can be. And uh, when I brought her home, she hadn't been shorn yet, and she does rue, and so she's the first sheep that I purchased the first sheep that I rued and the first yarn that I spun from my own flock. So very special yarn and I don't have a lot of it. So I decided instead of doing the cowl that I would cast on and do the sweater. Well, I was participating in the Zoom meeting. Um, I'm a patron of Marina's and what a, what a fun group. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to cast on and go for the sweater for myself. I'm nearly finished with my daughter's sweater, and so this can take me all year and I'll have it. Well, as we were visiting in that Zoom meeting, there was a number, another um, patron who was wearing the Boscular Yoke sweater of Marina's, which is another one that I liked, but I had my heart set on the wheel. Well, the more that I looked at that sweater um, and the person wearing it, the more I was really taken with it. And it also happened that I had just been for a walk in the woods that morning and looking up at the bare trees against the sky, um, I thought, you know, I think I'm gonna switch and make the vascular. And then I went back and forth, back and forth. And then I took two more walks in the woods and I thought, no, I'm gonna change to the vascular. So I bought that pattern and it's just a little bit different at the neck, so I, um, I don't know. I may I may keep the turtleneck though, and then just change the or you know make the stitch count and then go down. 
So I'm really excited about that. But the other thing that I'm really excited about, you know that I'm new to Shetland sheep. I'm new to raising the fine wool Shetland sheep. I've worked in the past with um, the more medium, the more, tra I guess, traditional uh, Shetland wool. And, um, but this is the first that I've experienced the fine wool, other than a small bat that I bought from Jen Johnson of Whispering Pines Shetland fleece. And so, I won't lie, it's tricky. It's a little bit tricky, and I've worked with fine wool, but never such a short staple. And so, um, I'm, it's a learning curve for me, but I wanna learn all I can about it before I offer it for sale. But so, I'm wearing this, and I'm not sensitive to super to wool much, but this, you guys, you can see, it's a nice tight turtleneck around my neck, and it is so soft and so warm and so delightful. I am thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. And I don't put much stock in the um, micron testing. Uh, to me, it's a number and it's a selling point and it's a breeding statistic. But to me, my hands and my skin are what tell me if a fleece or a yarn is soft or not. So um, it's a personal preference. I don't want to, a number doesn't tell me what I need to know. So anyway, this and style is, um, she's a seven year old you and her last micron count, I mean, just to give you an example, she's on the higher end of the ones that I have. Still a fine wool, but maybe a 25, maybe 25. If you looked at that as a number, you might think, oh my gosh, but I'm telling you, this is amazing. So I'm really excited. And so I wanted to show it to you. Um, <laughs> looks a little funny things sticking up, but I wanted to wear it around and see for sure if I wore it for a while, if I wore it while I was working, if I wore it with another shirt, if I liked it, and I love it. So this is going to continue on and be a boscular, and I think that because I don't have any other Shetland spun up, I think that um, the black is going to be the neck and the contrast color, and then I have some gray Corridale that I think is going to be the body, and I thought, that would really be meaningful to me. A meeting of the two, um, the entwined branches and the roots of the trees, the roots of my making. Um, I don't know, it just seems quite sentimental and quite fitting to um, go ahead with that. So what do you guys think? So I love it and I wanted to talk to you about that before I got started in with the spinning. And this is hand spun, I did spin this. So I'm gonna pause the camera for a minute and then I'll be right back with some spinning. Hello, I'm back and uh, I lied. I said I was gonna go right to spinning, but I wanna continue on with the, talking about the Shetland fleece for a minute. I'm gonna reach down and grab something here. This, in this bowl, there is almost two ounces of wool and this is wool from one of my ram lambs, Truman, who I've shown and talked about here before. And Truman is registered as a black, and he has not had a, um, any micron sampling done on his fleece yet because he's a lamb. I think I send that up this year um, if I'm going to do it, and I probably will. But um, because he's a lamb, didn't know, is he going to uh, have a fleece that can be rude or is he gonna need to be shorn? Well, it turns out that he's going. To, I'm going to be able to rue him. My other ram lamb, who is Trace, is a son of Style, who I just talked about, and Style does rue, and Trace's sire does rue, but it doesn't look like Trace is going to. Um, I'm. He's not, or if he is, he hasn't hit the rise yet. And just to talk for a minute, um, hitting the rise, I may not explain this exactly right, Shetland are a primitive breed, some of them, um, still like new growth comes in under the old in the early spring and there causes a natural break and uh, like say like here's a lock and he, if this were the body the new fleece is coming in here it it will cause a natural break and you can if they were in the wild that would they would rub it off or you can gently pull it off so that's what hitting the rise is, and that's called ruining the fleece. And there's information about that 
in quite a few places. But I, like I said, I'm new to this, so I'm still learning. Um, so anyway, he, he, it looks like I'm going, I mean, I've been able to take some pieces off all over his body. So this week, hopefully my daughter is going to be able to help me and we will get that done. We've had some really cold weather and I hated to do that. Um, but it's, it's warming up a little bit. Anyway, back to this two ounces that's in this bowl, or it's like 1.7 ounces. This is all from just around his neck. So almost like this little collar that I have on. And this was from just sitting out next to him, scratching his neck, and this just rolls off. And my sheep mentor, the person that I got my flat from, told me that when they're really ready to rue, you're not going to be yanking and pulling. It, it, it almost just rolls right off. If any of you have horses, it reminded me of when you use the rubber, round rubber curry combs and you go over your horse when it's shutting and you just get a layer of winter coat that just comes off. That's what this was like. It was unbelievable. I was just rubbing his neck and coming up with handfuls of this beautiful black fleece. Let me try to put it a little closer. I know because it's black, it's probably not going to show very well. I'll put it in front of my face maybe. I don't know. Is that showing at all? Probably not. But so this is his neck wool, and I'm so excited by this. I can't wait. Now, he's a lamb, and it's a little bit, I'm sorry, I keep looking down when I'm talking. It's a little bit tippy. Um, the tips, I didn't, I had him coated up until I put him in with the U's. Um, so there is going to be more VM, more chaff in with this. But I'm wondering if because this is a lamb fleece, there's a little bit of tippiness there. And see, that will come right off, even though the staple is okay. Can you hear it? Let me grab another piece to show you. Yeah, and you can even see there's some chaff in there. But see how that tip pulls off? <laughs> it sticks to my fingers. A lot of lanolin. And then the rest is okay. So I'm really excited about, about this and I'm gonna I'm gonna do something with it. I'm gonna wash this and probably comb it on my mini combs. So I just wanted to show you that really quickly too. I'm I'm so excited about it. And I I actually um Truman, it looks like he's going to rue. I've ended up with two weathers that I didn't plan to have. Um, a, a friend bought them. It wasn't working out with her, and so I've brought them back here. And they're both a beautiful blue steel gray. So um, they're here for right now. We'll see how that goes. But one of them appears to be ruining. They're twin brothers. One seems to be hitting the rise, and one is not. So I've got him to check. Um, I have the two yearling ewe lambs, and the same way. One appears to be... Uh, hitting the rise, the other not. And then I've got to change coats on the use, the adult use maybe this week, and I'm going to check about that. Well. I wanted to share that joy with you guys. And there are several of you who've reached out to me about buying fleece, and so we'll, um, we'll figure out what's going to happen with that as time goes by as we get closer to that. So we won't do actual shearing probably until April. And so we'll just see how that goes. So I did want to mention that. And so... I'm going to try to show you here with Truman's fleece. You can see that just laying here relaxed, it's a good, a good solid three inches. Slightly more, slightly less, but we did talk about that there's a little bit of an issue with the tip. So say a good three inches. Now let's see if I can do this, not knocking the camera over. So here I'm going to hold on to the end of that staple and stretch it out and you can see that we can easily reach 14. And I think you can maybe see the crimp in that. Maybe if I sit it on the table, <laughs> my old farm ruler. Look at that crimp. Isn't that gorgeous? And look how that will 
go from here to 14 and then relax back. So I thought maybe that close up would, <laughs> excuse the tripod leg, would show you a little bit. Thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. And he's more of a warm black. You can see there's a little bit of a brown undertone. Okay. Does this stuff excite you guys as much as it does me? <laughs> it does if you're a fiber lover, doesn't it? <laughs>